Hi, and welcome. I'm Dr. Beth Claxton. I'm a medical doctor, board certified in obstetrics and gynecology as a functional medicine practitioner through the Institutes for Functional Medicine. And today we have with us Jen Pike. Hi. About yourself. Yeah, so I'm a medical exercise specialist and I am a functional practitioner that specializes in women's health and hormones, cyclical awareness, movement, and so much more. Great. Thanks for joining us. And Thanks I wanted to, because I've been, um, since I started, I started hearing about seed cycling and mm -hmm. I was so curious about it. And then I um, heard something that you had put out about seed cycling and menopause mm -hmm. and thought that was brilliant and really supportive. So <clears throat> as we've discussed before recording that seed cycling like wisdom. And I'm a, I work with Ayurveda in my practice every day and falling back on ancient wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's just, I think it's, it's supportive. It's super supportive. And even more so than these studies that constantly contradict each other. Right. hundred percent. I, I, I am in the exact same, um, belief and, you know, it's interesting in all my years of studying, there are you know, entire communities, villages, and tribes where there's no such thing as PMS, there's no PMDD. Right. Women are not, their whole life isn't flipped upside down when they go through menopause. And I think that there's a lot we need to ask about that. Like in mm -hmm. our modern day, you know, societies in North America and in Europe and in different established right. areas, like we really don't create the pause for women's bodies to be able to feel as vibrant and connected as we could be. So when we talk about something like seed like, cycling, which we're literally using food, we're harnessing the power of food to send mm -hmm. a message and to connect to our bodies to create a level of a rhythm. Now, when we're postmenopausal, our entire hormonal you know, structure and landscape is completely different than when we were cyclical women with a bleed. I still believe firmly mm -hmm. that we go through cycles as women postmenopausally. We do it in the mm -hmm. absence of the robust abundance of those hormones and a bleed. But where the seed cycling can be helpful for a woman postmenopausally is to help her to get incredible sources of essential fatty acids, vitamin E, trace minerals, selenium, zinc, manganese, magnesium, and fiber that are going to help to keep her body moving through her ability to detox, to break down and to fully move a lot of the excess hormones and toxicity as a whole out of their body. Because for a lot of women, when they go into menopause, one of the areas that really changes for them is their gut function. They end up being more bloated, more gassy, reflux, a lot of bowel changes. And if we can do mm -hmm. something like alternate seeds, so when I'm working with women postmenopausally, we're obviously not following your menstrual cycle because you don't have one anymore, but this right. is where the, the lunar wisdom can be very beneficial. We're very interconnected to the moon, which the, t the moon is controlling everything in terms of the tides in the water, um, the moon phases that it goes through and mother nature and all the seasons we move through are so beautifully intertwined. Yeah. And so when we think about this from a moon perspective, in that first half of the moon cycle, which is from the new moon until the full moon, the new moon is very representative of what a bleed would be. It's the pulling back, it's, it's the dark shadow side. So there's a lot of inner work happening. And all the way up to that build, which would be ovulation, which is like the full moon, that's where we would do one to two tablespoons of ground pumpkin or flax. And then in the second half of the moon cycle, so once the full moon has happened, and now we go into the waning phase, so from just after full moon all the way until the next new moon, then you would do the sunflower and the sesame. And again, we're doing that to support everything we talked about, but for women in menopause also, the difference in their hair, their skin, their nails, um, it's a great way to also support satiety hormones, leptin and ghrelin, and also their blood sugar. So I think there's a lot of benefits. Right. So can we go over specific, the, the flax seeds? Is it one tablespoon of each, two tablespoons of each? It's, 
It can be a combination. Um, it can definitely be a combination. We want to use raw and organic is best. And we want to use like freshly ground. So what I typically have women do is if you buy it in whole seed form, then in a like in a little grinder, just like a coffee grinder, you can grind up and put mm -hmm. it into smaller mason jars. You can put a little scoop mm -hmm. in there or just have one nearby. So you could do a tablespoon of flax and a tablespoon of pumpkin. You could do, you know, two tablespoons of flax if you wanted in the next cycle, then you could do two tablespoons of pumpkin. Um, you can also grind them up and have them in the same jar together and go mm -hmm. in and do that. Um, in the US, you actually have access to a really beautiful company called Bia Wellness, mm -hmm. which has three month um, packages that you can purchase that have your phase one and your phase two totally built out for you. It's nice. auto shipped to your home every three months, which the three month thing is really important with any new cycle you're going to approach with the body because our ovaries, yes. we have this 90 to 100 day folliculogenesis cycle that we go through. It's a season. So mm -hmm. any change we're really trying to create from an ovarian perspective for the ovaries to really receive the message, top down, bottom up, um, you need to give yourself a season. It's not like, oh, I've been doing this for two weeks, I noticed nothing. I'm like, well, you need 76 more days, <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. of being consistent. Um, mm -hmm. So there's that. And then again, in that second half. Now, I also get asked a lot, well, what if I what have if sensitivities to those different seeds and I can't mm -hmm. use that? There are different um, oils, different supplemental things that you can use to emulate that. Now, I also get asked okay. things like chia and hemp. How do those fit in? wonderful beautiful healthy for you not part of the seed cycling system to my knowledge up to now um, mm -hmm. but if we have to use oils in the first half of your menstrual cycle bringing in barrage oil or gamma -like, um acid mm -hmm. like gla and in the second half even mm -hmm. primrose oil would be yeah. what you would use yeah. like a sixes and then the, the hemp me. and the chia are more omega-3s. These are the, the ones that we're talking about, the DGLA, those are omega-6 fatty acids. And the hemp and the chia are more omega-3s. Omega which, yeah. Yeah, they can be used to balance them as well. Yeah, and I'm a fan of incorporating yeah. all of them in, but when we're talking mm -hmm. about the cyclical aspect of using these, there's a different reason for that. Right, right, right. Great. Um, and then could you, do you have anything to say about hormone replacement therapy, like women who are on HRT, this might even be a really helpful way for them to clear that out. Yeah, one of the most important things when you're taking HRT, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, whichever it is, is that it's understanding how we're metabolizing, how we're breaking down what is coming in. So whether it's oral or it is topical, the body has to, it's just like when we make a hormone and we use a hormone, then we have to break the hormone down and excrete it. It's no different than if we're taking this supportively. And so how does your body utilize it? And then what does your body do with it? So if we have this poor recycling and elimination system in the body and we're having this backup that is where we'll see some inflammatory symptoms show up in the body and in the system so you know women who are postmenopausal that are like i still feel like i have period symptoms i have sore boobs i have water retention i have bloating i have you know all these things i used to get with my period that's oftentimes a sign that you want to look below the hood and be like okay what's going on on that gut function right. what's going on with how you're actually detoxifying and eliminating. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and lymph system I find in practice plays a huge part in this as well too, right? So it's lymph and drainage and detox pathways are all lined up. And so those are some key indicators I would look into. And again, we're, we're simply using whole food inside of the body and then giving the body an opportunity to let us know what is the response? Is it a healthy response? Is it a positive response? Is it no response? And that is really what we can be using to inform our decisions as to, this is a really great health practice for me, it feels good, or I gave it three to four months, I didn't notice the shift, and maybe it's not for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is, that's super key, the three to four months. Yeah, yeah it's hard, we, um, we're so used to immediate results. And for us as women, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm always so cognizant to remind women, your whole life around you is coming at you like this and wants of you now and wants of you yesterday. Don't participate in that in your own health and body. We're not designed for that. 
our bodies as wisdom. You talk about like, you know, older wisdom and, and that innate knowing. All of us know this on an intrinsic level, that it does not feel good to be running this rat race, you know, called the North American life that we're all doing and trying to keep up as an octopus in life with a million different directions and different things. Mm -hmm. All any woman really desires is to be able to slow down Mm -hmm. to, you know, live a life on her own terms. And so when we try to step into health practices, that need to happen faster, quicker. I wanted the results yesterday. And we put these expiries and these timelines on when I have to achieve it, when I have to feel this, look like this, be like this. You are working against yourself every single time you try and apply that tactic and you will end up with diminishing returns and you're depleting yourself as opposed to nourishing yourself. So it's the total opposite of what our bodies desire, of what we really desire. But everything around us is telling us and convincing us the opposite. And this is really where you have to put your blinders on as a woman. And you got to go in here and stop outsourcing out there. And you have to apply different techniques and strategies to yourself and then give yourself the time to really hear the feedback. Yeah. yeah. And um, and just like we have a couple more minutes, I, I want to put a plug in for environmental toxins. Oh. And how they are overwhelming our liver and how the seed cycling may be just a really basic way to start that process, to support that process. Because they'll bind, they're binders, yeah. they'll chelate, they'll grab a hold of these of these estrogen mimickers of the, you know, mm-hmm. xenoestrogens and I mean, this is a whole nother conversation because as women, we are the target market. Everything from what you're Mm -hmm. washing your hair and your body, Mm -hmm. your skin with, to how you're moisturizing, over sanitizing your body, your makeup, your deodorant, your house cleaning, the plastic you're drinking out of, the plastic you're heating your food in, the receipts you're touching, like literally everything. You know, we have pores for a reason, for things to move out and for things to come in. And unfortunately, we have far too much. The the ratio of the not so good coming in to our Mm -hmm. body's ability to filter and detox is massive. And anyone who says to you, you're born with filtering organs, you know, your liver and your kidneys and your bowels and your, you know, your lungs. (laughs) Yes. And they are so overworked and stagnant. Yeah. And and this is what adding in something as simple as seed cycling can do is to help mm-hmm. to, again, lymph drainage detox, help to support eliminating stagnation so that things are in flow and moving. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I think that's a great note to end on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks You're welcome. So for your wisdom. You're welcome.